Welcome to Alara TV, the show that celebrates people of all abilities. I'm Zachary Reese Waller, your host for this evening, and women adore me. No, they don't. I'm just kidding. And with me is my co-host, Ben Sutherland. Welcome to the beautiful Sages Cottage on the Mornington Peninsula. We can't wait to show you around. But first of all, let's catch up with our official Wallara CEO, Phil Hayes Brown, not Hash Brown, like the one you get at Macca's, to tell us all about our property. Welcome to the show, Phil. Thanks, Zach. Good to be with you. So tell us, first of all, about the property here at Sages. Well, we have 38 acres here. It's a wonderful farm. We have some gardens. We've got a great lake, friendly farm animals, and it's just a beautiful place to enjoy. Zach, don't you think? What's your favourite part of the farm? Well, walking around the lake or walking through the rose gardens. I agree. Beautiful, beautiful places. So, Phil, what have we got coming up for the future? Well, uh, next year in February, we open a cafe in the barn for the public. So people will be able to come up and have breakfast or lunch here at the farm, do the walk mm. around the lake. But we've got even bigger plans than that, Zach. Yeah? Yeah. We would like to build an inclusive education centre on the farm because we're all about teaching and learning. And we want Monash students involved, TAFE, Auslan, a whole lot of different skills to teach here from the farm. We want it to be Australia's most inclusive farm. That sounds great, Phil. Now, while you're here, can you explain the next story? Sure. Coming up next is a story about Ben Van Ray, who's done some TV work, like yourself, Zach, mm -hmm. called Finding My Thing. I'm Ben Van Ray. I'm 21 years old, and I'm an absolute sports nut. Having a disability forces you to take a really honest look at your life and what you can and can't do. I mean, I'm never going to be the next Usain Bolt, but I'm okay with that. Since I left school, I've been asking myself, what do I want to do with my life and what am I good at? And it's finally starting to click. I joined a disability service called Wala and they encouraged me to try public speaking. And it turns out I'm good at it. I started speaking at schools, then I got asked to do corporate functions, now I'm emceeing at big events. It's amazing seeing Ben up on stage in front of four or five hundred people doing his thing, hosting shows and answering questions. As a mum you always get nervous for him, but so proud and so amazed at what he actually can do. The next thing I did was join a weekly radio show. I started by introducing songs and doing really small segments. Now I run the panel and produce the show. Welcome to the Hey Hey It's Well Live Show on KC Radio 97.7 FM. Last year I was invited to join Wallara TV to learn about video production. And I was like, where do I sign up? Getting my head around the software and cameras was pretty challenging, but the guys made it easier by breaking it down into simple goals. We get to use some seriously cool gear. The camera stabiliser is brilliant for me because I can use it in a wheelchair. I've now presented four television shows, edited and uploaded videos to YouTube and I feel way more confident. What I've found really exciting to, to see is Ben come to the realisation that he has a voice and that he can use his passion, the media and the opportunities that he's been given to promote inclusion and to have his say. When I pull up to my desk in the morning, I have no limitations. I can work just as well as my friend sitting beside me. By focusing on my abilities, I found a way to make my disability disappear. I have a vision impairment that makes it difficult for me to see little things. Every day, I miss out on so much information because I can't read it. Things like maps, timetables, and newspapers are hard for me to read. Access to information is a basic human right. Accessible information gives people choice, independence, and dignity. Whilst one in five people have a disability, improving access to information will also benefit the wider community. 
Documents should be provided in accessible formats such as HTML, text and Word. Generally, PDFs are not fully accessible. Flyers, posters and brochures shouldn't be too cluttered and key information should be easy to read. I love reading and using the computer, but sometimes the text is too small for me. To make it easier to read, I increase the font size, I change the color to black text on a white background, and sometimes I bold the text. Using plain English with everyday words, short sentences, and pictures makes it easier for me to understand. To ensure you are reaching your target audience, consider alternative formats such as Braille and audio files. Websites are often the first point of contact for many organisations. Therefore, it's crucial to ensure they meet international standards for accessibility. It is important that information is presented logically, links are clearly labelled, and video and audio files don't play automatically. Like most other people, I spend a fair bit of time online and those sites that are designed well are the ones I use the most often. Just because the document's online doesn't mean it's accessible. Good websites are designed with options around both navigation and how you can access the information. Some of these features include options for text size and text colour. Pictures and graphics should have consistent text descriptions. Forms on your website should be compatible with screen readers and audio and video files should be transcribed or captioned. Many of these accessibility features are really easy to implement and they can make such a big difference. Accessible information also includes signage. Signage within buildings and facilities should include symbols alongside words, be well lit, have bold, clear fonts on plain background, use raised tactile lettering, and where possible, have braille to assist people with low vision or blindness. Over 40% of Australian adults struggle to access basic information and have low literacy skills. This includes people who have English as a second language. Making sure information is accessible is just as important as making sure our buildings are. Simply providing information in a range of different formats ensures your organisation is connecting with the wider community. After the break, we've got more great stories and we'll check out some of the animals at the beautiful Sages Cottage farm. Don't, Don't go away! Welcome back to Alara TV. I'm here at the Sages Cottage Farm with our farm manager, Rob Sorrell. How are you, Rob? Good. Zach, how are you? Never felt better. And as you can see, there's a wide selection of animals on the farm. There's pigs, sheep, ducks, geese, and battering rams. I'm just kidding. They're just goats, by the way. Now, one question, are these goats friendly or are they gonna run me down? No, Zach, these are some of the friendliest animals you'll find on the farm. Uh, our goats here are really great. They love everybody. Now, tell us, Rob, why do we have animals on the farm? Well, mainly, Zach, it's to give our clients the opportunity to have an animal experience. Huh. And that experience involves learning how to prepare their food, cutting it up, weighing it, preparing it for the following day and feeding it out. As well as that, they do some work with grooming them, uh, exercising them and generally just taking care of the animal's well-being. That sounds great, Rob. And speaking of working, here's a video all about Wallara Logistics. Hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Gary Baker, General Manager of Wallara Logistics. We provide meaningful employment, training and development opportunities for people with disabilities. Let's go and meet some of the team. I'm Sonia and I love working at Wallara. There are over 100 supported employees here. I love working here because I have a lot of friends and it's really fun. We all work together as a team to get the job done. I'm Serena. I've been at Willara Logistics for five years 
and I got my shirt too in warehousing. I'm really proud of what I do and I love it here. Today I'm packing in nose strips and it's fun. I'm Paul, I'm 45 years old. I love Wallara Logistics because of the friends I've made and the money I earn. Since I've been here, I've had the opportunity to learn a lot of new skills. The stuff are really encouraging. They teach me how to do the job safely. My favourite job is using the hot glue guns because I'm fast and I'm good at doing it. The good day for me is when I um, do heaps of boxes. I'm so I won my A of the year 2014. I also got my set to warehousing qualification. I love going shopping, seeing all the products that I worked on. It's really cool. I'm uh, I'm 30 years old. Since I've come to arrive, I've got my truck license and poultry license. Now I'm loading trucks and doing deliveries. As you've seen, Wallara is a great place to work. If you'd like to join us, please give us a call on 9792 2985. As a person who sometimes uses a wheelchair, accessibility is really important to me. However, sometimes it's the attitudes of people around me that I find of more of a challenge. When people think about disability, they often think about the physical access, such as getting into shops, lifts, ramps, the things that make it easier for people to get around. In many workplaces, it's easier to change the physical environment than it is to change the culture. But culture has a profound effect on how included people feel. Sometimes discrimination can be obvious, like when you don't provide access to a public building but there are often less obvious forms of discrimination as well, relating to behaviours and attitudes. People with a disability are often dismissed as incapable of being able to perform a task without being given the opportunity to display their skills. In the workplace, assumptions are often made about people with disability that aren't made about other people. Things like, what is the risk of employing people with disability? Is it gonna cost more? Are they going to be able to do the job? This is even before the interview. I find it fascinating how people treat me differently whether I'm in my wheelchair or whether I'm wearing my prostheses. Sometimes people talk to me in a condescending way when I'm in my wheelchair. To create an inclusive culture, we need to think about workplace adjustment. Workplace adjustment focuses on what needs to be done rather than how it is to be done. So one of the key questions to ask any employee is what do you need to perform your job effectively? A supportive culture is critical in ensuring that we are engaged, productive and connected and that we promote inclusiveness in everything that we do. When a workplace has a good culture, everyone feels included. Is your dog tired, depressed and off its mate? Give him a treat, he'll love to eat. Dogs to give dog treats. Handmade at Wallara. Only three dogs were harmed making this commercial. People with Down syndrome have special needs. Special needs? Really? It would be special if people with Down syndrome needed to eat dinosaur eggs. That would be special. One dinosaur egg. Enjoy. Totally right about if we need to wear a giant suit of armor, that will be special. I got a condo in Manhattan. Baby girl was so gonna get to grab it. Go pop a phone. It would be special if we need to be massaged by a cat. Uh... If we needed to be woken up by celebrity. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. How are you? You may know me from Scrubs or Office Space. A few darker flicks, The Rock, Platoon, Wall Street. Funny story, I, I played bed. Get out. My bed. That would be special. But what we really need is education, jobs, and opportunities. Friends is the 
love, just like everybody else. Are these me special? Don't go away. There's some more great stories after the break. Welcome back to Alara TV at the beautiful Sages Cottage. I have two special guests with me from the Disabled Surfing Association of Australia, Angus and Jenny. So Jenny, can you tell us a little bit more about the Disabled Surfing Association of Australia, please? We have two main aims, to take people with disability surfing and to enable greater access to the beach, Victoria and Australia wide. That sounds great, Jenny. Now, what kind of disabilities do you cater for? Every disability. People in wheelchairs, people with intellectual disability, people who are hearing impaired, vision impaired. We will take anybody surfing that is willing to go. Now, I understand that DSAMP is a volunteer-based organisation. And you, Angus, are a volunteer as well. Yes. What do you love most about it? Oh, it's just a great day and it's just fantastic. And Jenny, what do you love most about it? I love being involved with giving people access to the good things in life. That, my friends, is awesome. And last question, how can people get involved? They can go to our webpage and you'll see all the information on our events. If you want to get involved as a volunteer or as a surfer, all the information is there. And now, here's a short story called Keep On Learning. The Keep On Learning Health and Physical Education program is a unique partnership between Monash University and disability organisation Walara. It has two key aims. The first, to support our pre-service teachers in health and physical education with working with students with disabilities and learning to teach inclusively. And the second key aim is for the Walara clients to achieve their health and fitness goals. This kind of partnership unlocks so many opportunities for our clients to meet new people and to make new connections. Right from the beginning, our clients have been really enthusiastic about coming here. They were really excited when they heard they were going to get to come to uni. I really enjoyed basketball, soccer and football. I like interacting with all the students. They're encouraging and supportive. Coming into the program, I think at the start, just because of the nerves, I was quite um, tense and our, our sessions were very structured. And moving towards the end, I feel like building that relationship made me a lot more relaxed and that enabled the, the sessions just to flow. In planning for the sessions, we had to think about the, the type of students we had each week and be able to plan the activities so that we could make sure it was fair and equitable for all the students. Last week, I was partnered with Chris from Willara and we had a great experience with baseball in particular and Chris was able to uh, hit a baseball further than anybody else in our group. That was, that was really incredible. I think the health and physical education pre-service teachers gained an enormous amount out of the program. The main things I think they gained was a confidence in working with people with disabilities, a ability to adapt their planning and be flexible in their approach and also they had an amazing amount of fun. For me this program with Willara blends theory and practice. We are having to think on our feet and adjust our teaching practice in real time. So it's a great opportunity to be doing that. The biggest thing that I'm seeing is that teaching and learning is two-way. Going into a classroom without this exposure, I think I would have really struggled. I think I wouldn't have been an effective teacher and being able to include everybody. I've learnt to be more patient um, and being able to explain things in more than one way. The partnership between Willara and Monash Health and Fitness has been brilliant. Um, it has allowed our people to access resources that they wouldn't have the opportunity to access otherwise and it's actually been a really easy program to run. It's been an amazing experience and I'd love to do it all over again. This health and fitness program has been awesome and the popcorn is great. Is your dog Skinny losing its spur at Spinny? Give her the snack, she won't knock back. Dogs to give dog treats available at Walara. 
dogs to give you will too. Dylan had an accident where he was severely burnt. He spent several weeks in hospital and every morning he would watch the hot air balloons flying over Melbourne and that really lifted his spirits. So I said to him, when you get well, would you like to fly in a hot air balloon? He smiled and said yes. Watching the balloon taking off, I was very excited for him fulfilling his dream. Dylan's always had a fascination with hot air balloons. He always loved watching them. Thank you for my best advice. Thank you for watching Wallara TV. We've had a lot of fun making this show. For more great stories like these, check out our YouTube channel, Wallara TV. Now, as you know, things don't always go according to plan. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> yeah, that's right, my friend. So we thought we'd show you some outtakes from the show. From all of us here from Wallara and Sage's Cottage, sayonara, everyone. Bye. If you'd like to see more of our show, the If you like to see Okay. I'll be like <laughs> bloopers. Great, so great for bloopers. <laughs> Flies. Hey guys, guys! Somebody get this thing off me! Sorry, it's like a bug. <laughs> Go away. Okay. I haven't had to write any lesson plans or anything like that. That's fine. Yes. Wow. Mm. What's this space? <laughs> Your guests with me from the Disabled Surfing Association of Australia. Oh, whisper. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's an outtake. Oh. Don't, go Don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go. Oh. Where oh. were you? Oh. Don't go. Don't go away. Oh. Don't go away. That's it. <laughs>